what do you want to create? So I just got my hands on the new Copilot Create capabilities, and I want to give you guys a walkthrough of how they work, not only to create content, but the real mind blowing part is edit content. So we're going to create and edit images. We're going to create and edit banners, posters, and most coolly, I think, is even videos. Now, if you think I've seen all this before with ChatGPT or other AI tools, you haven't, right? Like this just takes this whole idea of creating content and editing and manipulating it to a whole new level. If that sounds like fun, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so to get started, we'll go to office.com. And what you're gonna see here is that I actually have a new experience. So all the stuff is over on the left instead of the right. Now, as we look at these features today, I do wanna cover real quick, like where they're coming from. So I'm logged in as my Shane at powerapps911.com. So it's a Microsoft 365 account. And I have the Microsoft 365 Copilot license, right? That $30 per user per month license. Now, keep in mind also that while this is rolling out, as far as I know, like I feel like I'm the very first person that got it. <laughs> How lucky for me. But you should be seeing this coming out uh, over time very quickly. And by over time, I mean like they said early June is when it should be done rolling out. So I don't know what that really means, but I got it. So let's just look at what we can do with it today. Okay, so over here, what I'm really after, right, there's a lot of different changes here. We're not gonna go through all of these. What I really wanna get into is this create section down here at the bottom, right? So I'm gonna click on create. And so this is gonna take me into the new create experience that we wanna focus on today. And so what's really awesome about this is it gives you this whole new way to use the large language model, the AI co-pilot to create content and not only create it, but customize it and edit it. I think that's, like I said, my head exploded when I realized that I could really truly edit this stuff. And so we're gonna give you some ideas of how that works. So for example, to create an image, we're gonna go down here and just like you've probably done before, right? We're just gonna describe something we're looking for. So we'll do something like a screenshot of a Power Apps Canvas app being edited in the Maker Studio. Right, so we give it that request. Now on the style section here, we can get into different things, photorealistic, geometric, you know, flat design, low poly, I don't even know, right? Like there's a lot of different default designs that you can provide here, but I'm gonna roll with, I wanna just go with something that is very photorealistic. So we'll choose that. Um, also here when I was adding the image, I could have added a base image myself. So if I'd had a screenshot I wanted to manipulate, or maybe a picture of a person or a product or my lovely dog who's sleeping over there on the floor, right? We could have added an image to kind of be the base of this as well. We then have brand and color. And so I have created a Power Apps 911 V1 color or brand kit. And so I'm gonna show you how to create these in a little bit. But if we choose this, really what it's gonna do is if it has to introduce any colors or fonts or words, right? It's gonna to try to stay within our brand uh, guidelines that I've kind of set there. And then of course for the size, I actually wanna set this one to be a wide size. We'll choose the wide size and then we'll go ahead and say create. So when you do this, it's gonna take you into the experience and they're doing the whole diffusion thing. So you're gonna kind of see the image is gonna work its way from top to bottom and kind of start to take shape as it goes. So let's give this thing like, 30 seconds to a minute to do its job. Okay, and so there you go, you can see that it's finished up. Now this one, you know, it looks okay. Um, I could go back to it here though, if I wanted to change it, if I wanted to be like, hey, make the screen show, you know, multiple buttons or, you know, change it to be a bright uh, format, right? Whereas it looks like it's using like a dark mode here. Like we could continue to drive those behaviors with the, uh, the transform experience and iterate through those. So you have the capability to do that. But you also over here on the right have a complete set of editing tools. So if we jump into the editing experience, right, we start to get things like you moving, creating stickers, changing the resolution, updating the functions or updating the, the filters, the backgrounds, like the blurring, like there's a lot of really interesting stuff that you can do, right? So that's the edit. If I wanted to throw some text on the screen and like at manually throw my own in here, it's a kind of, you know, like it reminds me of Canva Lite, right? Like it's a real lightweight editing experience, but I can continue to use it to modify this image that I've done. Okay, so we're not gonna sit here and work through images, but I wanted you to first kind of get this idea that look, we can make these, you know, it's automatically saved out there for me. Like I'm gonna download this. I might want this in a minute, right? So we'll download this one. Okay, so I got that downloaded. So that's creating an image with words, but then remembering that you can transform it. So for example, let's go back over here to create, let's look at one I did earlier, right? So if I click here on my images, these are all the different ones I've been playing with. 
All right. And so, for example, you can see that I had one earlier today where I had Buddy's, you know, mind being blown, right? And I gave it the picture of Buddy and then did that. And then now if I want to take this, you know, and pull out the background, for example, then it's going to extract that out. So then I could have a standalone image of Buddy with his mind getting blown. Wah! If I do a good job, I added that into the actual video earlier. Um, but so you can kind of see that, you know, we can work with the mixed there as well. Or if we go back over here again, and so like here we've got the dive in one. And so with this one, I originally prompted it, hey, give me a picture of a burning doodle jumping into a pool. And so it gave me the picture of the burning doodle jumping in the pool. And then I went back to it and said, hey, add uh, the words dive in in colorful text, and it added it in there. So this was, you know, kind of me working through. I always try the dog ones because I think they're more fun when I'm playing, but you can see that I've been making different versions of the dive in, the jump in. Um, all just from prompts. Now, when you do images like this, it creates a image, right? It's a flat image. It's not a bunch of layers. Why do I point that out? Because if we go here and say, instead of creating an image, I want to design a poster. So for example, maybe we want to make a poster that does, make a poster that shows a comparison of Power Apps, Canvas Apps, and model-driven apps. Same type of thing, so I described it. I'm gonna go in here and say, make sure you use my color kit. I wanna make sure it's on brand for me. And then we're gonna say create. And so this is going to start making a poster that will show those two. We'll give it just a few seconds to do its job. And so here you can see now I've given me some different pieces. Okay, so you're like, well, how's this any different than the images? So what's really cool about this, let's say that we really like uh, this one with the weird trees, right? So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say edit. So it's gonna take us into that same experience. Here's the magic of this one though. Look, well, there's my company logo, but notice, oh, I need our company logo to be bigger, right? It is the actual logo object. Learn more about their features, uh, right? Maybe we want to change this to be like learn more features. I don't know, right? But we can edit this because it's the actual text. So we do create an image. It was just one flat object. Here, when you do design a poster, it's actually the assets all in there. So you can edit, manipulate, delete, modify, right, add your own over here. So for example, maybe I want to add a, uh, a sticker of something, right? So I can go over here to my media. And so uh, earlier I had generated an image of a uh, little dog here, right? And if we want to just, let's, let's create one, right? So what we'll do is we'll actually click on visuals and then we'll say we'll generate our own. And so I don't want a whole image, I want a sticker, right? So we'll go here to stickers and then we'll do something like a burning doodle working on a computer. We'll say create. And so it's going to make us a couple of different sticker ideas. And then we're just going to, be able to slap them over there. And then, of course, it'll be in my library forever. So I can use those later on. So there you go. I like this guy right here. And so we'll just grab this. And there you go. Now he's in our image. And then we can manipulate. So this to me is very interesting because not only am I able to generate the base design, manipulate it, incorporate my own pieces, and it's all staying in my brand. So very, very cool here. So that's my design a poster. So now let's click on design a poster up here, which will take us back. We'll go back to the create. And so let's design a poster. Design a banner works exactly the same way. The only difference with design a banner is there are some different sizes available. Now, before we get to the one that I'm most excited for, the creative video, let's talk for a second about the whole brand kit. So the way that you do that is you go over here to more and you just go straight into brand kits right here. And so this is the one that I've created previously. So let's just open it up. So basically it's just fill in the blank. So if you want to throw some company logos in here, set your company colors, right? If you use a specific, easy for me to say font. Uh, if you got some general images you want to incorporate so it has it available as needed. Um, I haven't created a template, but you would just create a template here. And so I think I PowerPoint templates, things like that. And then brand voice, so hey, you know, use a friendly tone. So I'm trying to kind of set it up for if it starts generating words for me, then it knows kind of the way that we like to talk here. Okay, so that's all I had to do to manage a brand or create a brand kit. And so then now that's why that shows up under all these different ones as a choice for me. So then that way that purple, that logo are getting incorporated. Okay, so now for my favorite, create a video. So if you go here to create a video, you have two options. One is I can pop in some words and it's going to create a video for me. It's anywhere from about a minute 50 to 210 has kind of been the range that my videos have fallen in so far. Or you can have it generate one from a PowerPoint file. But once again, you're going to see in just a second, not only is it going to create the video, but we can also still edit every little piece of it. It's so cool. So let's give it something to create a video around. 
So look, one sentence, a video that compares Power Apps, Canvas Apps to model driven apps. You can write more. I've done several passes. I've actually made one video, probably gonna release at some point, that it was like a full on, here's all my thoughts. But we can also just give it a very simple one here. Or of course, the PowerPoint fi uh, file with a bunch of speaker notes and really have it go there. But so let's go ahead and hit create. Now keep in mind, this is gonna take yeah, less than a minute, but it is gonna take a second, so I'm gonna pause again. All right, it's made a video. And this time it's a minute 21. All right, well, usually it's about two minutes, so whatever. But so what we're gonna try to do is I'm gonna hit play and let you watch what it made, right, with just one sentence of information. So let's hit play. Power Apps is revolutionizing the way we build applications, allowing users to create powerful solutions tailored to their needs. Today, we explore the two primary types of apps, Canvas apps and model-driven apps. Each comes with its unique strengths, designed to empower users in different scenarios. Canvas apps offer a highly intuitive drag-and-drop interface, allowing creators to design their apps from the ground up. This flexibility means you have complete control over the layout and can tailor the user experience to your exact specifications, making it perfect for custom solutions. On the other hand, model-driven apps focus on data and business processes. They are built on the common data service, which allows for complex data relationships and a consistent user interface. This makes them ideal for scenarios requiring robust data management and enterprise-level applications. In conclusion, both Canvas apps and model-driven apps serve unique purposes within the Power Apps ecosystem. Canvas apps are perfect for custom, tailored solutions, while model-driven apps excel in managing complex data structures. The choice between them depends on your specific needs and goals. So there you go. All right. Two minute video, it's accurate. It's got the little background music. It's got different voices. It's got the words on the screen. It has a different B-roll, like the little videos kind of on the way. Like it's a pretty solid little video. Now I'll tell you, this is probably, I think it's the fourth time I've done this exact prompt and every video has been completely different. Um, all of them have been correct. The very first one it did was probably the one I liked the most, uh, but that's okay. So also, you know, as we look at this, like over here on the right, we have some different options. You know, we could go in and be like, hey, maybe I wanted it to be more playful and fun. Or maybe I wanted to set, you know, a different type of voice or different music, you know, right? So you can kind of change stuff here. Like, eh, boring. I agree, right? But you can. But really where the power lies, like, did you notice in there that it said the power or that model driven apps were built on top of a common data service? So if you're a historian, right, you know that before we called it Dataverse, it was called CDS, which was the common data service. So I want to fix that. I can't fix that here, but up here in the top right, I can say I want to edit in ClipChamp. So if we go to edit in ClipChamp, this is going to jump us into their full, rich, very impressive editing experience where, once again, it's all the pieces. It's not just one video that you got to mess with. They're all in here. So if we go and look through here real quick, I'm gonna find where it says common data service. Right here, look, they are built on the common data service. So there's the text. So this is actually a text-to-speech tool. So if we right click on this and say more options, you can see over here that it's like, all right, here's all the text it is saying. And so built on, we'll just get in here, we'll delete this and we'll say Dataverse. And just like that, it'd be fixed, right? So the next time we play it through, we're going to have it. It's to be read in this Brian multilingual voice. They have roughly, I need to count them. I keep saying I want to count them, I haven't. But there feels like about 100 voices over here, right? And so there's a bunch of different multilingual ones. If you get down here uh, in the English only, you know, maybe we want to find out what uh, this would sound like if it was Brandon, right? Hey, yeah, let's do Brandon, okay? So if we do Brandon, we can say, hear this voice. Choose from a variety of voices to help you create a story worth sharing. See, and so Brandon's voice sounds a little AI to me, right? So I probably wouldn't use that. So like, all the voices are different, and so you just have to find the one that kind of hits your ears the right way. But we can also, maybe we want to take Brandon's, and maybe we want to speed him up, right? He talked too slow. So we'll speed up his speed, and then, you know, we can change his uh, pitch here, and we'll be like, Brandon's extra high. No, 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 not that. Like, make his voice extra high, that high pitch. So now if you do it, choose from a variety of voices to help you create a story worth sharing. 
Now he kind of sounds like the micro machine guy, right? He was, he was way too fast. He was way too pitchy. But you get the idea. Like we can manipulate these voices in here as we want, right? So we're going to set that back to default, slow him back down and roll with this, right? So we'll save that. And so then now we are going to actually have the video, right? And we know that that one was read in, um, will be in Brandon's voice that time. Like this one here is in Emma's multilingual. So maybe instead of Emma, we want to change that one to be uh, Cora's. And we can just continue to refine this. We can also continue to change what they say. Okay. So there's a lot you can do here. Another thing that you might do. So when we were over here in the video, like it talks about, um, Canvas apps, right? And so here it was showing them, um, right, it was showing some uh, B-roll here that wasn't a Canvas app, right? So maybe I want this to actually be a Canvas app. Well, remember earlier we had the image we did, right? So we go back here to import media and in my downloads, right? Here is that screenshot that we generated earlier. And if we just drag this in here, we can drop it on. And so then now when the video comes through, right? It should show that. And then uh, what we might want to do here as well, because you know maybe we're not like, eh, it's not perfect. We might go to the image and we can go to effects and we're like, all right, and I want you to do that whole slow zoom on that image we generated. So we'll change this to be slow zoom. And so then now if we go back and hit play, right, it's using our image and it's still moving. So. Once again, it, you know, now I gotta figure out why and what I did to, I don't know how I made that too big, but so we'd have to resize this to get it back on the screen. I think because it all of a sudden I switched it. Okay. I didn't use a wide image. I don't know. Right. It doesn't matter, but you get the idea. There's a lot that we can do here. The last thing I want to make sure you know that it can do is if up here in the top, right? If you click on captions, you can actually have it generate uh, the caption. So it'll put the words on the screen that are being read out loud. Right? So once again, if you're trying to make a, video that could be universally reusable, you know, and it had the words, the actual closed captioning right there on the screen, or just generate the SRT file. All of that is built in. This is super cool. Like when I realized that, yes, it made me a video, but I could just jump over here and then take that and tweak it to be what I wanted as right. Like that's the whole image of buddy's uh, mind exploding. I will tell you, if you do the PowerPoint option I showed you a minute ago, that that one um, uses your PowerPoint slides. It doesn't do the whole B-roll thing. So then you'd have to come in here, maybe manipulate those, change the way those look. But this is really powerful, guys, right? Let's go back over here. So, you know, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. Um, create a form. So this is using forms.microsoft.com, right? That They've had the ability to create forms with AI for a while. So this is still there. You know, and like if I wanted to take like one of my training classes and be like, hey, post event feedback survey, it gives you a nice little starter prompt to kind of help you fill in the blanks around, you know, one of my lovely training classes. You should take one of my lovely training classes. Uh, we talked about design a banner, editing an image. So this is just taking an existing image and editing. We showed the editing experience. It's the same one as a create an image. Just you're not creating it. You're just uploading a file and editing it there. And then under more, we had like curate, you know, Word, PowerPoint, Excel. You've seen all that before, so I'm not going to do that anymore. All right, I think that's enough for today. So what do you think of your tour of the new Copilot Create? I think it's pretty exciting, right? There's a lot of interesting things that it can do. And this idea that not only can I create content, but I can use Copilot to then edit the content. They gave me this whole clip champ, this an image editor, right? There's a lot of really neat stuff there. So kudos to the team that put this out. I feel like for a first release, like this is, this is a lot more fully featured than I would expect. So what about you? Are you using Copilot Crate? Are there any of the features in there that you're wishing I would come back and make a full length video on? Let me know down in the comments below, right? I'm always looking for good reasons to do that. Also hitting the like button, never hurt either. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.